What is the crack, lads? It is the Midnight Kid here. Welcome back to episode 5 of Dream Team Chronicles. And as you can see, unfortunately, I have not got a face cam. Well, fortunately for maybe some of you guys that don't have to look at this ugly mug. But unfortunately, I do not have a face cam today. This is a couple of games, or these are a couple of games I played over the weekend when I was just chilling out, listening to some tunes, editing some videos, doing a bit, a couple of bits and pieces uh, to try and get some live stream stuff and doing all my overlays and stuff and just chilling out playing the events without the, the proper squad. Now, I do throw in a bonus little match at the end with Big Lads FC, just to kind of keep you up to date with where the squad is at at the moment, um, and just to have every game kind of recorded, every single game that I'm going to be playing is going to be, you know, recorded, I'm not going to be skipping any games, just to give you a, a proper, proper uh, journey, you know, with Dream Team 2022, but I wanted to take this time to kind of talk through this video, uh, without, you know, concentrating on the blow-by-blow match account really and just be able to concentrate fully on what I, I was talking about and just have a catch up with you guys because firstly massive massive thanks for the the huge support you guys have shown through to the videos and throughout the last couple of days um you know it's, it feels really really good to get back doing youtube and back doing content that i really enjoy to to play i mean i'm an average player i'm an average eFootball 2022 player um but i'm really enjoying this game because i'm kind of playing a, a brand of football that I think, you know, even though I'm very, very average at the game, um, and most of you guys watching this are probably better than me at the game, and you see me do a lot of mistakes, and you see me do a lot of things that you wouldn't do, um, I think the biggest thing is that I play a brand of football that most people don't play, which is wing play. You know, getting the ball out on wing, um, interceptions, and, you know, quick counters without kind of... Not quick counters so much that it's like, you know, one, two, three passes and go. But what I try to do is I try to bring in my wingers a lot so that like they're either they're either overlapping or they're either beating a man or else they're either drawing a man. Like I always try and make some sort of breakdown of the opponent's defense with my wingers. Uh, and that's kind of, I think that that can frustrate people that are used to going online for the last couple of years. And even in eFootball 2022, you'll see a variety of clips in this game here, which I'll break down in real time and showing you kind of examples of like what the, the, what my opponents, what mistake my opponent is making. So like, for example, there's one here, you can see who he's defending with. He's just chasing shadows. You know what I mean? He's chasing shadows. He's not protecting his core of his team, which is the most important area of the pitch to defend is your own kind of like center back position. You always need two players in there and then to be chasing once you're set at the back. And again, this guy was a very, very good player. He was a really, really good player. It was a really good match. There was a lot of individual brilliance from Iniesta. You'll see here, Iniesta just walks through me. Now, I made a big mistake by picking Osaka as my team. So if you haven't done this challenge, I would recommend definitely picking uh, Iniesta's team, uh, Vassell. Like, they're, I mean, I just could not stop Iniesta. And I think this guy, after about, you know, the first half when he was like running through me, I think he kind of realized, damn, Iniesta is actually like prime Ronaldinho. He must have been fully up in this game because you'll see here, I'm making the same mistake as this guy made when he conceded his first goal against me. I'm chasing shadows. I'm leaving myself completely open. He gets a lucky break from a uh, rebound. But I think the biggest thing is like when you start to play that way where it's like through the middle, touch and go, you know, triangles, one touch passing like this, it can work. But when it doesn't work, you leave yourself open to getting absolutely obliterated on the counter. And if you meet somebody that plays that way, you know, you're always going to come up against guys that are faster than you, that have better reactions than you, that are able to, you know, use the mechanics in their advantage a little bit better. So I play my style that I like to play, um, you know, win, lose, or draw, once I'm able to get the ball out to the wings, and you'll see here, like, this is kind of more my style, you know, beat the man, cut it into a really, really tight area, and then just try and slow it down, pick your pass, and I do get a bit lucky here with the with the ball in, but again, it's, it's um, you know, as I said to you, I'm an average player that I try to play kind of a, a brand of football that most people that come up against me it kind of, it, it takes a little while to adjust to the wing play. Like I would much rather come up against a guy and I do come up against a lot of guys in this video, which you'll see in a couple of minutes, like that, not even that they run at you, but that they kind of like go through ball, that they like really want the ball to their center forward as soon as possible and back to the wall, back to the goalie. Um, They're going to just try and like make something happen 
every single time with their centre forward. I use my wingers for that to kind of bring everybody into the game. Now, in my other squad, obviously, I have like a couple of really decent attacking midfielders who I have started to use a bit more. Um, and again, you know, I have Romario up front, so he's he makes me look a lot better than I am in terms of finishing goals, you know, that it's kind of an auto in uh, most of the time. But when you come up against a guy like this, it's 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 very hard when somebody runs at you like this. Now this was like a, you know a two all last last nine minutes of the game. Um, you know he was really spamming Iniesta because Iniesta I just couldn't stop him. And it was one of these games where I felt like you know I was never really in control of what I wanted to do. The two chances that I got out in the wing, I kind of punished him, but I got a lot of luck. And you can just see here, it was only in the 90th minute where I really started to kind of get to grips with Iniesta. And that kind of continued on throughout the team and throughout um, these matches. Again, you can see here, this was one of my most you know frustrating games here. I came up against this guy. Again, a very, very, very good player, solid player, um, gave me everything and more. Uh, he went 1-0 up, I came back with a beautiful goal there, it was a nice little finish, cheeky little finish into the corner, again, I was getting chances, but I was just not able to, you know, to pick out those chances, um, and again, he was kind of using Iniesta, he was playing a 4-3-3, and I think my advice to anybody that's struggling, because I'm, I'm getting a lot of people messaging, and even DMing on the, the Twitter, um, a messaging on the Twitter at Pez Universe, and they're kind of saying, like, I'm finding it really hard to defend, I'm finding it really hard to stop people, I know what they're going to do, but I'm not able to stop them. I mean, look, shit's going to happen, right? It's it's not it's not a thing that, like, you could go out every day, and you could play five matches, and you could do everything perfect in those five games, and you'll still can see goals, like there, from me. Like, there's nothing really I can do there. I make the challenge on Iniesta, I get the ball back for a split second, and then the, the animation kicks back that Iniesta keeps possession, he slots it back in, and it's a goal. And again, you'll see this again in this game, he's 2-1 up, I can't get the ball back here, I'm making myself look a bit silly here, I'm on ice skates, a lovely ball in, and a lovely finish, as I switch to manual goalkeeping. And this guy, you know, he was a very, very good player, you know, and it's nice to come up against guys from all different, uh, from all different skill levels. I like that in these events that you can, you can kind of see, right, okay, what's he doing that, that I can exploit? And in the second half, I, I kind of realized, right, this guy is playing very high, okay? He's playing very high, he's playing very aggressive, he's trying to keep his lead, but, you know, grow his league. His lead, that's a beautiful uh, slide tackle there, it's very rare that you need to slide tackle like that, but... Again, this is all about kind of defending the space, defending the zones and making him make the mistake. It's kind of like you have to back off just enough to say, right, OK, what are you actually going to do here? If he pulls off a worldly pass or a long range shot or a beautiful trick move and beats you, you kind of live with that. Do you know what I mean? Like this is a massive mistake here from the AI, which does need a bit of a tweaking. That's frustrating for him. He shouldn't have conceded there really. Now, it was a nice pass for me, but... Yeah, I mean, I got very lucky there. He should not be conceding that because he was set. But from here, I kind of realized, okay, this guy is getting very aggressive with me. If I want to pull ahead, I need to play my own brand of football, keep it out wide. As you can see here, it's a bad pass under under hit, but I do get lucky with it. He turns me over in possession again. Um, and from there, he I turn him over in possession. But again, I'm going to reset. I'm going to go back up the wing. Terrible pass up there again. And it's just getting very sloppy very, very quickly. So I was trying to think to myself, okay, it's just not my game. He's going to slot it in back here and it's a first time finish. I just couldn't get my wing play going. And when that wasn't working for me, like I had one good move here, you'll see. So the ball kind of breaks out here, uh, all the way out here. And this is kind of what I try to do all the time. Bring the winger in, you know, not go as direct. Have the man running, true ball, touch into the middle and it's a sweaty finish across the goals and in. But yeah, it's it can be difficult. And I understand that, you know, people are struggling. Um, people are struggling with the defending and they're struggling with the with the way that they kind of like hold on to leads or whatever, or hold on to um, you know, central areas of the of the park where I think that there is a bit of, you know, there is a bit of midfield battle there now in terms of the wings. I don't think through the middle is where you should be going if you are struggling to take control of games. Like, I would much rather have control of a game and lose 2-1 in, you know, like through a goal that I don't really, um, you know, feel like is just a bit, of a bit of bad luck or a bit of like, you know, a misplaced interception or a rebound from the keeper that he should save or a mistake or a penalty or a free kick or whatever. I'd much rather be in control of the game because then you're always building towards eventually, eventually through enough practice and enough, 
you know, getting getting enough reps in, you're going to eventually become to a position where you're able to win games regularly, you know, if your gameplay works. And you'll see in a couple of instances here, which I mentioned earlier, this guy is just kind of chasing the ball. And like, I would advise against doing that, even though I do it as well. And you saw in the last clip, now again, that's just a bit of luck. I start messing around with the ball up here. I should just finish it, thinking I'm playing with Corona and Romario. It's not going to work. And then I just decide, you know what? I'm just going to fucking belt it. And I absolutely smashed the letter off the ball. Top bins, lucky enough finish because of the rebound. I probably shouldn't have got that. He probably should have cleared it. But again, I'm I'm shushing the crowd there, telling them to calm down. The crowd are going to hit me a box. But like, yeah, I think that's my best advice that I can give to you. I mean, is to just play your strengths and don't worry about the meta. Don't worry about what, um, you know, what everybody else is playing. You know, if you want to have a team that's like, you know, a very, very, very solid core at the back and you want to play a possession game with really slow but, you know, brilliant dribblers or brilliant guys on the ball type possession. You know, if you don't want Kante and you want Tony Cruz, if you don't want, um, if you don't want, you know, a fast AMF who's got like 84, 85 pace and you want Kevin De Bruyne to be able to ping passes in through the tightest of gaps, like, that, you know, I would reckon, like, pick whatever suits you, pick whatever works for you, and don't worry about whether it's going to be rewarded or not. I think when you start getting better at the game and when you start playing enough games, you will kind of realize that you need to have a combination of different ways of attacking. Like, you'll see here, I'm, you know, I'm playing, like, one-touch, quick, quick passing, literally, like, one-touch passing, that the ball isn't even taking a touch. Um, and this guy obviously just decided to quit, which is fair enough. I get the win, that was the first event, then I was into the, you know, needed three points, I think, in this game, but, like, it's always, it's always going to be different for everyone that has, has different ways of playing the game, but I think as you kind of play more and more games, I think you'll kind of realize that, okay, well, I like playing on the wings, I like playing overlaps, okay, that's fine, you can link that in as, as your main breakdown of play, right, but then on top of that, you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't play quick passing, like you can see here, touching goals, you know what I mean, like you, I was going to play out wide and then I decided to recycle it back into the middle of the player, into the pat, and it's a lovely finish. And I know that you have to make these decisions in a split second. I know sometimes that the AI's positioning decides the positioning or decides the decisions for you as well. It's not all just like, you know, it's easy to look back on footage like this and be like, yeah, I meant every single thing that I did there. You know, in the in the heat of the moment, like if you're chasing a win or you're chasing a goal even, it can be very hard to make the right decision, but I think the more games you play, it's like any video game, you know, you get quicker, you get better. If you're playing a, an FPS, you get better at reading the map, you get better at reading where players are going to come from and anticipate where you might get sniped, where you might get shot from. Whereas in, you know, football games like this, and especially eFootball, because it is that little bit of kind of labored responsiveness in the defense when you lose the ball, as you can see here, it's kind of bobbling around and there's no reaction you do have to kind of preempt a lot of the stuff in terms of like, right, okay, well, if I'm going to pass the ball here, you know, what's what's going to be the outcome if I don't get the ball? And that can be kind of hard as well, because if it doesn't work, you can be countered so quick. But if you keep doing what you're doing, and eventually it starts to work, games that you decide, you start to dominate, you'll be able to build like up a really wide variety of attacking options. So you like you'll be able to mix possession-based football, 20, 30 passes, drawing somebody in really, really deep, frustrating them, and then hit them on a really quick counter. You'll be able to do, you know, three-man triangles. You'll be able to do touch and goals. You'll be able to do target men long balls. You'll be able to do stunning crosses. That was a lovely goal there just before half. You'll be able to do all of these in like all your attacks. So like Instead of this guy just thinking, right, well, I like to play down the middle, you know, I'm going to play every single ball down the middle. I can kind of mix it up and decide, right, well, the last time he attacked down the middle, the time after that he attacked down the wide, the next time he, he lumped the true ball forward, then he did a stunning cross. And I think it's just all about practicing what you kind of want to do. Now, obviously, there is some meta stuff in. This is one of the things I think that is super OP that needs to look at from the short cross and then just take it in. Now, like if you're expecting it, it's easy enough to stop it, but a lot of people don't expect it and don't react quick enough. Um, and that is something I think that does need a little bit of a tweaking. But again, yeah, sorry, lads, these games are all um these games are all kind of similar games. Um, so you know, they are a bit repetitive with the same two teams, obviously. Um, everyone that I played picked, you know, this team. 
Um, and then obviously I had my team, which you can't change from the start. So yeah, that obviously was a little bit frustrating. Um, but like, I like these events and I think that as the time goes on, I think that like what I would like to see them produce and see them to bring in would be like events where you're kind of like in a position where you can say, right, okay, you can only have, you know, a team worth over 15, uh, or 150,000 GP or 400,000 GP or 500,000 GP. And then you have to pick from your squad and nominate those 11 starting players, nominate your manager, and then get to work on, you know, playing maybe 10, 15 matches where you, you, genuinely, just, you genuinely just have to, you know, make the best of what your squad is. And I think that to me, that is kind of where this mode needs to progress into and where it needs to evolve into is to have... A lot of options all the time that you can just decide right i have a superstar squad i've got Vieira, i've got romario i've got piaul i've got donnarumma i've got whoever but i do like this kind of mix-up of playing with lesser teams lesser stats lesser ratings where the kind of the, the gameplay shines through a little bit more in terms of breaking down attack and breaking down defense now i'm not saying that i prefer it i'm not saying that i think it's better uh, I do like to play with the superstar players and I do like to have Romario on them. I think it's it's a lot more, you know, crack um, to be able to like blitz through people and, you know, have Vieira being an absolute unit in midfield. I love playing with that as well. I love the five star experience, but I also love this where, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of forced to play with lesser rated players. So you kind of have to make your passes stick that a little bit better. You have to decide where you're going to put the ball that bit, that bit sooner. You're going to have to you know, make a tackle and commit to it and go for it and just live with the consequences of it. So I do think that that's what they need to bring in to uh, Dream Team over time is to bring in filters. They had it in my club, you know, where it's like you need to have a team strength of 2,000 or under. So, you know, I need to make a decision. Do I pick Vieira in DMF? Do I pick Piao in CB? Do I pick Romario up front? What do I actually do in that situation? And build your team around that. And then it's set in stone that you can't change it. Like I like that restrictions on it because it kind of makes you it makes you kind of just sit down and have the gameplay in a specific way where you're not going to just be constantly looking to 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 tweak whatever player. And it's like, oh, my 95 rated Romario isn't playing well enough for me up front. I'm gonna bring on my my 97 rated Mbappe. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes the answer is just about actually sitting down. And, you know, taking losses sometimes because you come up against a better guy or it's not your day. And sometimes it's 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 the, it's the opposite where every pass is sticking, you're dominating and you can just enjoy actually playing. So I did finish the J League one. I have the American League and the Spanish League left. So I decided to play one in the Spanish League to see how that was going to go. And like, as I've said, this is this is something that I like to I'd like to see expanded upon. I'm not going to keep going on and on and on about it, but I would like to see this of a very simple thing. And it's like, OK, you know, custom pick your, you know, put nominate 11 players to put forward from your squad. Team strength has to be under 2000 or you can't enter. And then when you enter with your 2000, I mean, imagine the, the variety of squads you would be coming up against. And obviously you could have the same, you know, you could have an unlimited mode as well, or you could have like a five-star squad with no limit on the team strength or no limit on the GP worth of your squad. It's just about options. You know, it's just about options. Now, I decided to pick Madrid. Obviously, you guys are saying, of course, I'm going to pick Madrid or the best team in, this, in Spain. I was thinking of picking Barca as well. I'll be honest with you, because I think Barca would have suited my play style a little bit more. But I wanted to switch things up. I wanted to play kind of like a 4-4 or a 4-3-3. Three, three. I wanted to test out Vinicius. I wanted to test out Casemiro. I wanted to test out Benzema most of all. He was kind of the guy I wanted to test out uh, to see if I am going to be investing in another striker. Romario is my speedy kind of fast finisher, mobile, athletic, uh, very versatile. I can play him as a CF or an SS or I could play him even out a little bit wide. Do I want Benzema? Is Benzema good? And I must say, lads, I mean, you'll see in this game, Benzema is an absolute tank. He's so good in front of goal. I obviously haven't played as uh, Lewandowski online, and I know Lewandowski will be amazing as well. But Benzema's first time touches, his first time lobs and finishes, it's just a serious, uh, it's a serious advantage to have a player that can finish like that. Obviously, Romario doesn't need an upgrade at the moment, but it's always nice to keep your options open. Now, I was talking about this before, about how people certain people play and defend right you'll see from the tip off 
you'll see this guy is super, super, super aggressive in pressing me, right? So the first thing I'm going to say to myself when I'm playing against a guy like this is, well, if this guy is going to be super aggressive like that, I need to, I need to break his press. Kind of like how you, you know, break a serve in tennis or whatever. I need to break this guy's press so that he's not going to be able to dominate me when I have the ball. And when he has the ball, he's going to be, you know, obviously trying to get it up as direct as possible. When I have the ball, I'm going to be trying to frustrate him. Not in a way that I'm going to be keeping the ball around at the back like, you know, like somebody that doesn't want to play football. You know what I mean? If I go one up and I'm like, oh, I'll just keep it around the back. No, that's not my style. But I, wanted to fr I, I want to frustrate him in that, like, I'm not going to let him play his brand of football, which is, you know, this guy's whole MO here was to get, look at that for a finish from Benz outside of the foot lob. This guy's whole idea here was to get the ball back as soon as he could and as quick as he could when he didn't have the ball and when he had the ball to go as direct as possible, direct route to goal. So my whole, like, thing to stop him here was to kind of break his press and to you know hold on to the ball a little bit more and as you can see here i knew straight away that he was going to be kind of doing this sort of stuff at the at the start of the game because you know 10 minutes had gone and he'd already kind of like spammed through a couple of balls which again is totally up to him it's totally his um his choice to play this way i personally don't think that this works against somebody that plays possession and is comfortable enough on the ball like i was just completely so sucking him in um, and soaking up the pressure he was chasing me with two players all the time but watch the gaps now i get unlucky here mendy comes back around mendy's an absolute unit actually as well um i really enjoyed playing with him but again he's just looking for the quickest route through goal like if you time how long he has the ball like it's literally like seconds compared to me you know what i mean like you look at here i take it forward with carvajal i slow it down i reassess i recycle i go back to cruz pass to casemiro back into Vinicius, now I'm going to play my touch and go to give me the option, but I don't use it, now I'm going to go out wide to Carvajal, and I'm going to use my option again, touch and go, Vinicius is going to be in with the AI running in, Vinicius is in on goal, and it's a shot on goal, so I had the ball about maybe 30 seconds there, maybe like 20, 25 seconds, and again here you'll see, you know, I'm stringing passes together, I'm stringing opportunities together, waiting for the option to come, now he has the ball here, he gives it back to the keeper, hoofs it forward, back into a 50-50 position, and I get the ball back again. So his time on the ball, he's never going to... Like, I can live with him getting a lucky true ball, or I can live with him getting a, a, a getting a, a lucky goal, even, um, you know, from, a, from a, like, against a run of play. But, like, if I'm going to be having 70% possession, like, there's not a lot he can do with the ball. Like, it's as long as my possession is progressive, that I'm not holding it around the back, like... I'm able to control the complete tempo of the game. And I was like thinking to myself, right, well, if this guy gets one back, I still feel like I can get a chance. I still feel like I can score a goal or two to be able to, you know, get back into this game. And I think that's another thing that you have to look at, especially for newcomers. There's a lot of new guys that are coming over from FIFA, or coming over from, you know, maybe different games that they've never played a, a PES game in the last couple of years, or they might've played PES 20 and went on then to something else or just didn't play sports games there's a lot to learn in it but at its essence is it goes back to what i said in the first couple of minutes like as you play the game you will start to realize certain game plays and certain game styles that people have you know are they quick counter passers are they quick aggressive players that's a lovely goal in fairness it's very quick it's very effective to play like that but you will you know you will learn right well is this guy playing like long balls true you know is he building attacks like is he passing the ball is he actually looking to break down my attack is he trying to beat me you know is he trying to beat me at my own game is he trying to outpossess me or is he trying to actually just kind of like go you know stay aggressive and this guy stayed aggressive the entire game so all i had to do was break his press make the player run into the box get into a position where i was able to slow it down and once that happened i was going to get acres and acres of space and you'll see i break his press time and time again he hoofs the ball forward it's an interception Carvajal intercepts to Danny Cruz he he gets sucked in with two players here he gets a bit lucky I get a bit lucky I recycle it back to Cruz and then I'm off off of my bike again little trick back out to Cruz and I've got a chance in on goal here and it's a stunning shot in ball doesn't nearly goes in for an own goal recycled again chip pass back again from Alaba I'm building all the time all the time Casemiro patient into the box Camavinga touch into the box and then it's a lovely finish from Benz, who is definitely on my scouting list as to who I could uh, could buy as backup for a Mario because he looks un unreal. 
and this is what I'm talking about, right? Like, yeah, look, I'm 2-1 up. This is me kind of like, you know, soaking up the pressure and bringing him in. Now, watch his left back here, right? I just absolutely wait, right? Now, he thinks he can get back with Rodrigo. He probably can, and he does get lucky here. But I get the ball back again, and I get that bit of luck, and then it's out wide again, and I'm getting my, getting my chance, even though it looks like the most ugly brand of football and all the interceptions. Give the ball back in here, and I fluff my lines, but Courtois still nearly leaves it in. But that's, that's the thing, lads. As I said, and I, as I keep saying it, I'm an average player. Like, I, I'm not spectacular at the game. I just kind of try and do the simple thing right. You know, if I see space and there's a chance to, uh, you know, put the ball in a dangerous area, that's where I put it. If I don't think that it's going to go through and I think that there's a better option on, I'll recycle it and use the width. And 90% of the time, I use the width of the pitch to really spread somebody because it's like they're fixated on, you know, they're fixated on the ball. And a lot of the time when you come up against guys, they're fixated on stopping the pass, stopping how they play the game. Do you know, so if you're coming up against somebody like this guy, he's probably thinking to himself, OK, well, I need to defend the center of the pitch and, you know, do teammate press and I need to do all this sort of stuff because, you know, he was expecting me to probably play the same way as him. Whereas, like, he wasn't probably expecting me to play out, out in the wing, out in the wings as much to bring in my left and right midfielders, um, Vinicius and Rodrigo, I think I was playing there. So, like, he probably should have adapted to that after the first maybe two goals went in. But he kept he kept putting the ball, he kept pumping the ball forward. And, like, it doesn't really matter, like, how good you are. Like, you can kind of withstand the pressure like that now in eFootball 2022. This guy would have probably beaten me in PES 2021, but because the game kind of rewards that possession-based slow-down pace of the game where he's getting punished, like you'll see here, watch, he, Danny Carvajal leaves a big gap there. He tries to go in central. I just take him on. I get unlucky by doing a flick. Danny Carvajal hoofs the ball forward again, gives it back, I, and then he's going to teammate press in. I get a lucky enough touch. I'm true here again. He gets an interception. It's just like he's living... He's living and dying by the sword, basically, here. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's bum-rushing out, trying to win the ball. He's trying to get back in possession. He's two men chasing the ball all the time. And once you break that initial pressure, like, you're going to get chances like I get here with Mondrich. You're going to get chances here. I probably should have finished that, being a bit greedy. Back into Vinicius, into the balls of, uh, of uh, David Alba. He took one for the team. And Valverde, who came on as a sub, nearly got his lob as well, but... Yeah, it's just a couple of tips, lads. As I said, you know what I mean? I'm not the best player in the world. Definitely, there's a lot of other guys out there that are much better than me. But it's all about finding what works for you, what you like playing, and then, like, expanding how you attack. Do you know? So if you're a wide player, start bringing in a bit of touch and goals. If you're a touch and go player, start bringing in a bit of wide play. You know, get your teammates team set up right. You know, have your DMF, have your AMF, have your CMF. If you're playing 4-3-3, three, three, have one winger that's a really tight dribbler and that's good to cross. Have another winger that's just a pure speed merchant. And then, you know, you can switch them. You can switch your left and right midfielders if needs be. So just to close out this game, lads, in the last two or three minutes here, um, we're going to go back to, to Big Lads FC. And this was actually a really good game. Now, again, I've, I've kind of said that, like, I'm building a nice little squad here. Corona is obviously an absolute tank. Romario is just literally, you know, press, shoot, and score. He is that good once he's been boosted up. But I think it's all about just kind of finding what works for me. So having played with Real Madrid and having played with the, with the Japanese team, Osaka, I'm kind of thinking to myself, would I be better playing a 4-4-2? You know, have Vieira just as my DMF, have a, a really good um, left and right midfielder, and I do have that in, I think, Munayin and Corona. Or maybe, maybe you know, I would need to keep Munayin or Corona or one of them, at least, as a kind of a second option in off the bench. Maybe Munayin um, as a second option and buy somebody like Dembele, buy somebody like Vinicius Jr., buy somebody like Ansu Fati or, or, or Saka to have that blister and pace. Now, it'd be hard to get rid of this man. Look at him. Michael Flatley, the river dance, Corona, absolute beast dancing feet by he doesn't know when to stop he's like michael jackson after a couple of drinks he's just tearing up the wing no one can tell him no do you know no one can tell him no he just does what he wants to do dribbles i've tried to drill it into him in training you need to reuse the ball get rid of the ball no nah, he's his own man he doesn't give a fuck but like the thing about it is is that like if you're going to be playing with a squad like this i do think that like I do need to, before I make any more big GP purchases, I do need to probably decide, like, what 
I'm going to do manager wise and play style wise before I boost up any other stats you know um I do think I probably benefit from having two strikers up front especially the way I play but I think I'd be taking a big risk by playing a 4-4-2 with Vieira DMF a kind of a diamond Vieira DMF and then have my left and right midfielders um you know that would be my main attack and threat on the wings and then have an attack and midfielder now I could let go of the attack and midfielder then as well and just play kind of like an SS um you know maybe play Dybala or maybe play somebody like that in that position um but I think that that would kind of like you know Messi would obviously be the ultimate there just have him sitting behind Romario but then I'm thinking do I need a big man up front to kind of switch things up do I need Benzema would Benzema improve my goal scoring a lot would I concede more goals by switching from a 4-5-1? Because I do like, I must say, I do like having even Nakata here as a centre midfielder just to link up the play. And then you have the runs from the wing and you have the runs from my attacking midfielder, which is Pedri in this situation. Like, I do like having all those options. Do you know what I mean? It's very hard for me to switch from a 4-5-1 now because it's been my favourite position in Pez for years. Now, I could go 4-3-3 and play a centre and attacking and a DMF you know I already have Vieira I already have Ritz I already have Pedri now that I could really kind of utilize that 4-3-3 Barcelona style uh, kind of formation and play style but I do think I'm going to stick to a 4-5-1 for now so Paddy V knows that he's going to get it tonight that's why he's so excited and that's why he's roaring and around the place like a jackass but um yeah lads that is it that is it for me right that is it for me let me know in the comments below what formation you guys are playing like you know have you tried a 4-3-3 or a 4-4-1 a 4 4 or like what sort of formation are you playing let me know in the comments because it's coming to that point now where i do ne need to make a decision for my final kind of choice i think for the next few months so yeah but anyway, lads, that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed episode five. Bit of a different one. Hopefully the energy is back in with the live comms in episode six. I'll be bouncing. But yeah, this is just kind of a nice change of pace. Maybe every five episodes we'll do this kind of breakdown. But let me know. Maybe you think this is shit and you don't want an episode like this if you just want live face cam. So yeah, let me know. Any feedback is good. And uh, I will talk to you in a bit, lads. Peace.